Did you know that you can save up to 90% on your proxies if you make them yourself? And it's way easier than you think. My name is Abed, and in this video, I'll walk you through a step-by-step -step guide of how to make your own 4G LTE or 5G mobile proxies using Android phones or USB modem kits, also known in some countries as USB dongles. By the end of this video, you will have your very own mobile proxies built using entirely free tools that will outperform anything you can buy off the market. Making your own mobile proxies requires some effort initially, but it has a lot of benefits. It will cost you a lot less than buying ready-made proxies, sometimes up to 90% less. It can generate extremely fast proxies with insanely low latency, especially when running a local setup over 5G. Plus, it's extremely secure and private, so much so that it's impossible to achieve the same levels of privacy and security when buying from any proxy provider. Now, with all that said, it comes with some drawbacks. Mobile proxy networks can be time-consuming to set up and they require regular maintenance. Plus, they do require an additional investment and there's a small learning curve involved. However, I personally believe that it is still way better than buying mobile proxies in most cases, especially when using a professional platform like the Proxy as Proxy Builder. Since the process is different for phones versus USB modems, I've broken this video into two sections, starting with the Android phones, then the USB modem kits. Now without further ado, let's get started. The first step in making your own mobile proxies is to select what hardware platform you want to use. There are really two options with some variations possible for both, but it comes down to Android phones or USB modem kits. For all beginners, I recommend Android phones because they're easier to get started with and are often faster. However, the problems with the Android phones quickly arise once you start scaling up your mobile proxy network. Once you're running more than 5 to 10 phones, they can become tedious to manage and maintain, requiring a big time commitment to keep everything running. USB modem or dongle kits, on the other hand, are managed via central Linux computer, in this example the Proxidize SX2, which makes them a lot easier to maintain as you don't need to update your modems individually. And because they run on what is basically a dedicated server, they can have a lot more features like passive OS fingerprinting or remote restart which are either impossible to do on Android or they would require rooting the phones, which is a lot of work. Plus, they're a lot more cost effective at scale. The only downsides are that modems are much smaller than phones, meaning their signal reception is weaker. So they might be slower in some cases, depending on the signal strength in your area. And in some countries like the United States, USB modems will also need a hotspot plan since mobile carriers classify them as network sharing devices. So if you're planning on building a small-scale mobile proxy network and you only need a few proxies, Android phones are your best bet. However, once you're scaling to 10 plus proxies, USB modems become a much more attractive option. With all that said, here's what I recommend. Start with whatever you have. If you've got phones, use those. If you've got modems, use those instead. But for most professional use cases, USB modems are the way to go for their versatility, ease of maintenance and scalability. Lastly, no matter what option you choose, remember that you'll need a SIM card with an active data plan for each phone or modem, and the amount of data required will heavily depend on your specific use case. Creating a mobile proxy from your Android phone is extremely simple. All you have to do is download the Proxidize Android app from Google Play, sign up for a free account on Proxidize.com, set up the app and grant it needed permissions, then hit connect. And that's it. It's really easy to do. Now let's do it on an actual phone. Here, I have a cheap Samsung phone that I got specifically to use as a proxy. However, you can use almost any phone running Android 7.0 Plus, which is any Android phone made since 2016. First, I need to head to Google Play, search for Proxidize and install the app. Once the app is installed on my phone, I can open it up, then head over to my laptop to sign up for a free Proxidize account. I just go to proxyas.com, hit start for free, and sign up. Once I'm logged into my Proxyas account, I need to head over to the Proxyas Proxy Builder and there I will see my QR code at the top right corner of my screen. The QR code is used to authenticate and connect this specific phone to my account. Now I need to scan the QR code using my phone while I'm inside the Proxyas app. After scanning the QR code, I need to give my phone a host name. In this example, I'll use Samsung Proxy. Then, give the app some permissions that are needed for it to function properly.
After that, I just need to hit connect, wait about 10 to 30 seconds for the VPN prompt to show up, accept that, and voila. I have just turned my phone into a mobile proxy which took less than a minute and I can monitor it from my proxy as proxy builder dashboard. Now if you want to add more phones, you just repeat the process and that's it. That's how you make a mobile proxy from your Android phone. Now for the big dog, turning USB modems into mobile proxies. This is more technically involved but it has a lot of benefits, mainly being easier to maintain and more cost effective at scale. Basically, all you need is a small Linux computer, a USB hub, and a USB modem. Hook everything up, power them on, and then install Proxidize. Here, I have a Proxidize 5 modem kit, which is made up of 5 Proxidize MX2 modems, 1 Proxidize SX2 server, which is a small Linux machine, and 1 Proxidize HX1 USB hub with all their needed cables. Although this is the best hardware you can possibly get for mobile proxies, it is far from the only option. You can actually use any third-party hardware as long as it meets some specific technical requirements, which I've documented in a blog post that's in the description below. For example, I can be using a Raspberry Pi 5 with a ZTE USB modem and they would function at a similar capacity. Now to get started making mobile proxies using USB modems, I first need to assemble the hardware and power it on. First, I need to connect my USB hub and micro server to power, then connect them together using the included USB type A to USB type B cable. Then I need to connect the micro server to the internet using the included ethernet cable or any CAT6 ethernet cable. Lastly, I need to insert SIM cards into my USB modems and plug them into the USB hub. Now that I have my hardware powered on and assembled, I need to install the Proxidas proxy builder on it and onboard it to my Proxidas account. In order to do that, I need to first connect to it and we have two options to do that. Either connect the micro server to a monitor, mouse and keyboard, then open a terminal there which is the easier and preferred method. Or the second option is to SSH into the microserver from another machine using SSH client like PuTTY on Windows or the SSH terminal on Mac. For starters, to install the proxy as proxy builder and onboard the machine using peripherals, I first need to get a monitor and connect it to my microserver using the included HDMI cable, then connect a USB mouse and keyboard. Keep in mind, you might need to restart the SX2 microserver if you connected HDMI to it after booting. Once booted, I need to open a terminal by clicking on the bottom left grid menu and searching for terminal. Once my terminal is open, I need to run these commands which I'll keep on the screen for you. I'll keep these commands in the article linked below. Once that's finished, I need to open up Firefox if it didn't open automatically and type in exactly this. This will open up the local proxy as proxy builder dashboard. Next, I need to log in using the credentials admin admin. Then I need to agree to the EULA by scrolling to the bottom of the page, ticking the checkbox, then clicking continue. Then I need to give my machine a name. In this example, I use SX2 host. Now I need to go to my Proxidize dashboard on app.proxidize.com, take my pin code from the proxy builder section and paste it into the pin field, then hit continue. And just like that, I have now installed the Proxidize proxy builder and onboarded my SX2 microserver using peripherals. If you'd prefer the SSH method, a detailed step-by-step -step guide is available in the blog linked in the description. And that's it. If I want to add more or less mobile proxies, all I have to do is plug modems in or out. This is the power of the Proxidas Proxy Builder on Linux and what makes it so much more powerful than the Android version, especially at scale. Now that you know how to create your very own mobile proxies, the sky's the limit. You can use these proxies for anything you want, just remember, use your proxies responsibly. If you have any questions or if there's any step that you need help with, please come by to our community on community.proxyize.com, which I'll link to in the description. There, you'll have access to our staff and other Proxyize users that have been doing this for years, and you'll be more than happy to help you with anything you need. Also, feel free to drop by our Discord server where you can chat with us or other members about your use case and needs. Lastly, I've written a more detailed technical tutorial in a blog post that you'll find linked in the description. Feel free to use that as reference if needed. Proxies are undeniably powerful, and an essential part of the web automation and data collection journey. But it's one step fit. With millions of users relying on proxies daily for different needs and use cases, the possibilities are endless. Now that you've created your own mobile proxies, the only question is, what's next?